Oh, no, that hurt. All right. Splinter to the nose. Anyway, today, guys, I want to share with you the greatest woodworking hack you've never seen. Are you ready for this? So as I mentioned, I've, I think I mentioned it in previous videos that my, my dad and I had a cabinet business for 15 years together where we did really high-end cabinet projects. I mean, we did projects for homes that were multi-million dollar homes. And then we did, you know, just your basic regular household cabinets as well. But we really liked the, the high-end projects just because we could get more creative with those. And it's kind of funny because a lot of people don't like working, a lot of father and sons, they butt heads and have a hard time working together. But even before that, my dad and I had worked together when we worked for other people for probably five years before that. And even when we, just when I was living at home as a child, my dad always had a workshop out back and I'd go out back and learn and, and work with my dad. So I've always enjoyed working with my dad instead of butting heads with him. And people used to ask us that when they'd come into the shop. They'd say, don't y'all ever have problems? It's kind of interesting, a father and son. And I'd always explain to them, we've had no problems. As long as he does exactly what I tell him to do, we get along just fine. <laughs> but my, my dad, he a pretty smart feller. And he would come up with a lot of really cool ideas whenever we were you know, through the process of being in the business and everything. And I remember like one time we had a project come up where we needed poles that were, uh, it, was like, it was a bathroom cabinet, but it needed to look like it was made out of bamboo. And uh, so he took a drill and mounted it and, and made a little mini lathe for us that we used at the shop, saved us several hundred dollars on that particular project. We used it a couple more times whenever we needed something. Uh, we never turned any pins with it though. But anyway, he's always been very good at coming up with really good ideas. You've seen him in some of the videos before. But even though you don't see him on this channel, actually he's a pretty big part of this channel because he does a lot of figuring out for me. Uh, anything I need to build or uh, come up with a plan for, I'll go to him and let him draw out the plan for me or I run it past him to see what he thinks is a good idea just because he's done it longer than I have and done more than I have. And it's kind of funny because even in one of the, even in one of my videos where I was testing, I was comparing the table saw to the track saw, which one should you get first? And somebody commented on that video, you know, uh, people need to get away from YouTube and you need to get out and really learn stuff. He was basically saying, I think from what I gathered, I didn't know what I was talking about, which is funny because after building furniture and cabinets and all kinds of woodworking for 20 years and my dad doing it for what, 40 years or more, uh, apparently I still don't have enough knowledge, but anyway, I've been talking long enough. What I want to tell you about is one really cool idea that my dad came up with. Maybe somebody else has done this before. I've never seen it done before. And I can't even remember what the, the project was that we needed this for, uh, whether it was like straight up dowels that we needed or what, but we needed them out of something that was probably out of walnut. And I'll show you kind of on a small scale here, uh, the way you can do this. And basically what it is, is a way to make dowels out of any type of wood you want without a lathe super fast and super easy. So I'll get it set up now and I'll kind of explain to you how this works. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use this piece of cedar that I had left over from a previous project. And I'm gonna set my table saw up to a half inch. What I did here was to cut a half inch. This is just half inch all the way around. And whenever I cut like a long, a, a small skinny piece like this that's long, I just, you know, this is what we've always done. I just leave that end long and then I'll go back and this, this whole overall length of this thing is far longer than I need. And this can just be cut off and that way I don't have to use a push stick or anything or get anywhere near the, you know, closer to the blade than I want to get. Even though it's a saw stop, I wouldn't lose my finger, but I would have to replace the, the stop block and I don't want to have to do that. Next thing we have to do is take our stick and you can take a sander if you want to use a sander. We had a belt sander, a wide belt sander, or uh, excuse me, an edge sander that we would take it over to and just kind of round the edge. I'm just going to take my knife because what you want to do is take, you want to round it off a little bit. You 
need both ends of the piece of wood that you're going to be using to be rounded off. So, you know, obviously you want this to be six inches longer overall than what you're going to want. And I'm not going to need any of this because I'm just going to be using it for demonstration. Now, on to the next piece of the mosquito. <laughs> By now you may have figured out how this is all gonna work. We're gonna turn dowels with a tap and die set, specifically the die set, cause uh, as my good friend Worf would say, Today is a good day to die. Use a, use a die anyway. I, I don't want, yeah, anyway, let's go. Take your die wrench, and I'm gonna be using the half inch die Obviously, that's why I cut everything at a half inch. And these just have a little set screw. So obviously you're kind of limited in how big you can make these by the size of the die that you have and also the size of the drill. You know, I've got, a, I can put a half inch uh, drill bit in there. So ergo vis a -vis, I can put a half inch dowel in the end of my drill. So that's what we're going to be making today is a half inch dowel. Well, actually we're not going to be making a half inch dowel, but I'll explain that in a moment. Anyway, as I saw the way that my dad did this, we, we didn't have a, uh, we didn't have a vice there. We didn't really have much of a use for a vice. And my vice here is not connected. I don't, I haven't put it together yet. It's in pieces up underneath the bench. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill a hole in a two by four and then I'm gonna clamp that two by four to said bench. And anyway, I'll show you how this works. Just happen to have a two by four right there handy. How about that folks? Half inch drill bit because this is a half inch, this wrench, I already measured that. I'm sorry, I pre it's, it's all a show folks, it's all a show. Then you can take your die wrench and drop it down in the hole there. I'm just gonna hold that with a quick clamp. Open your drill up into the end of the drill. Tighten it down. Put the other end in the die and away we go. When you have the length you need, just go cut it off. Once you do have everything cut down to the size you want, you can put it back in the drill. Then you can just take a piece of sandpaper. Basically, just like you would on a lathe. If a smooth finish is what you want, you can do that. And now you have a, an approximate half inch dowel. It doesn't work out quite right to a half inch. So you have to kind of go bigger, go big or go home. This ended up being actually three eighths. So running, I cut this to a half inch square all around, ran it through a half inch die, came out with three eighths inch dowel. And you may be asking yourself, what is this good for? Well, actually there's any number of uses that you could use this for. Perhaps you have a need did I just say perhaps? <laughs> perhaps you have a need for such an occasion as to need a dowel to a particular size. Also, a good thing that these could be used for is loose tenons uh, for joinery. Go ahead and make your long dowel and then cut them into the tenon pieces. I think probably maybe what we use these for was actually plugs. And you can get a plug cutter for a drill, which is very simple. You just cut, you know, you drill. If you haven't ever seen one, uh, it looks kind of like a Forstner bit and it leaves uh, a plug there and it cuts a circle out around it and then you pass it through the saw blade through your table saw 
and the plugs drop off. But that's kind of a hassle that you lose the plugs, but you do get an exact size. So that may be another use for this. And if you don't have a tap and die set, you know, you can get, you know, if you know that you want a half inch, you can get the wrench and the die for probably 15 bucks or less to do these. And depending on what your needs are, it could be well worth that. When it comes down to it though, what is the real hack? Well, the real hack may not be how to turn dowels or plugs or loose tenons with a tap and die set. The real hack may be listening to people that may know more than you know. On any project, if you have somebody, especially like I have my dad I can go to, somebody that can throw out an idea, even if it's somebody that doesn't typically do this, because you just get into the mindset of, oh, I've done this before, uh, this is what I need to do this. Somebody else can come at it from a different angle and really have a good idea and really save you, uh, perhaps save your money or save your skin uh, on a project. I like projects like this too because, um, you know, this is not what this is made for. I like trying to figure out ways to do things that are not meant to be done, using tools for what tools are not made to do. Sometimes the best tool is not the tool that was made to do what you need it to do, but in fact, the tool made to do something else. And I will see you next time.